Welcome back, everybody, to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 20. As today, we have Game 6 of the World Series, as our Pittsburgh Pirates will be taking on the Cleveland Indians. Currently, we are down 3-2 here in the Fall Classic after losing games 4 and 5 in the last episode. Two pitching duels, our offense just never got going. Their offense was not much better, but it was enough to win both games, clearly. And now our backs are against the wall. If we win this Game 6, our Pirates will go to a Game 7, which would be in the next episode if we do win today. And if we lose, well, the Indians win the World Series. Obviously, our offense has been very poor in the World Series, to put it lightly. Both teams have been dominated by great, hit, by great pitching and bad hitting. If you like pitching duels, then you will like all five games so far of the World Series. I think only once has a team scored more than three runs. That's when we scored five in uh, a game two victory. So not a lot of offense. It's been all about defense here, all about pitching in the World Series. And we'll see if our pitching can keep us alive here in game six or if the Cleveland Indians will win their first World Series championship in three quarters of a century. Welcome everybody to Progressive Field as we have Game 6 of the 2023 World Series between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cleveland Indians. The Indians have a chance to do something that they have not won in 75 years, win the World Series. These fans have been waiting a long time. This sports city has dealt with losing for a while. They only have one championship, the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2016 in the past 50 years. It should be a fun one here as you get a look at both lineups tonight. Regular starters for both teams. And Cabrian Hayes will be starting for the Pirates at third. Benny Lane will be the DH. They will hit at the five and six spots respectively in the lineup tonight. On the mound for the Indians will be Sunshine Mike Clevenger. He got the win in game one. Six innings, he only allowed one earned run in that one, as here is Pablo Cairo, the leadoff batter. Hits this one nicely into right, however, it would be caught for the first out of the inning by Bradley Zimmer. Solid start for Cleveland, here's O'Neill Cruz now. Full count pitch, and he hits this one nicely. Deep into right center, and it's gone. Welcome to game six, a quick solo shot by O'Neill Cruz. His sixth home run of the postseason, I believe, is first of a World Series. And the Pirates are now up one to nothing. That's how you want to start an elimination game. Pittsburgh is 3-0 so far in the postseason in elimination games. Obviously, they came back down. Actually, they're 4-0 in elimination games, excuse me. They came back down 3-0 in the NLCS against Washington. And obviously did not have any elimination games in the NLDS against Colorado, beating them in four. Here's Josh Bell, the following batter, going to keep the offense going. Gets that one over the head of the third baseman, Riley. And that'll be a one-out double for Josh Bell as the Pirates have a runner in scoring position. They are not satisfied with just one run. Francisco Mejia now, who's probably been the best hitter on this Pirates team in the World Series, he will strike out. Swinging a little bit too early at a low off-speed curveball. Probably would have been a walk, if we're being honest, if he looked at it. Benny Lang now rips it into left for a single. And Pittsburgh has two runners on here and two outs. A huge at bat here for the rookie, or the second year pro, I'm sorry, Cabrian Hayes, who will fly out to right. Zimmer with the catch. It's a successful inning. The Pirates are on the board. This is probably the first time in the entire postseason that they've scored in the first inning, for what it's worth. It seems like the Pirates just have not gotten anything going in the first inning so far in the playoffs. Here's the rookie, Santiago Osuna, on the mound today for the Pirates. He pitched excellent in Game 3, getting a win for the Pirates. That was obviously their last win so far of the World Series as he strikes out Bradley Zimmer. Oscar Mercado now draws a walk on a changeup. It took over four innings in Game 3 for the Indians to even get a base runner off of Santiago Osuna. And it looks like they're going to lose their current base runner. Part-time ball player, full-time sniper behind the dish. Francisco Mejia guns down Mercado for the second out of the inning. Mejia has one of the strongest arms in baseball, and, well, you don't want to run on him. 
Here is Lindor now, going to hit this one high and deep into right. It reaches the warning track, but Carlson makes the catch, and that'll do it for the first inning. Pittsburgh leads it one to nothing. Good start at the plate and pitching for the Pirates. So far, so good, but they need to play well these next eight innings if they want to bring this series to a game seven. Brian Reynolds now got to open up the second with a weekly hit single, but a single nonetheless is over 50% of the Pirate hitters so far today have a single or have a base hit. Three singles and a home run. Speaking of home runs, this one looks like it go over the fence at the track of a wall and it is caught. Wander Franco nearly had a bomb there, but instead Zimmer was able to get to it. If that ball went up maybe a foot deeper, it would have been gone. Carlson now jams this one into left, and it will be caught by Domingo Santana for the second out of the inning. So it looks like Pittsburgh's going to need a couple base hits to go down to drive in a run. It looks like this one will be a hit, a single into center for the rookie out of Venezuela, Pablo Cairo. And the Pirates now have two runners on here and two outs. A potentially huge at bat for O'Neill Cruz. And he strikes out on the slider. The Pirates have been, well, to put it bluntly, atrocious in the World Series with runners on base. And it looks like that won't change here as Clevenger gets out of the jam. Score remains 1-0. Bottom two now. Here's Brandon Lau. Going to lead things off with a fly out into left center. Brian Reynolds with the catch for the first out of the inning. Here is Domingo Santana. Now the 1-2 pitch. And he will ground this one to second. Franco fields it on a chopper, and he will get it out to first for the second out of the inning. Santiago Osuna so far has not allowed a hit yet. And, I mean, Osuna struggled in the NLDS and the NLCS, but so far he's been outstanding in the World Series. Naquin now grounds this one to O'Neill Cruz. A quick 1-2-3 of work from Osuna and company. And the score will remain 1-0 through 2. As so far, the Indians lineup has not been doing too hot. The Pirates have five hits today, which I think is more than they had in all of Game 5. On to the top of the third, Josh Bell getting fooled by the low curveball. These Pirate hitters throughout the entire postseason run have gotten fooled by a lot of low off-speed stuff. There's another low off-speed pitch. Would have been a walk if Mejia looked at it, but instead he takes it and he will weakly ground it out. And the Pirates are losing base runners this way. Denny Ling now, 1-2 pitch. He will strike out on a 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Good inning of work from Sunshine and the Indians as the Pirates are unable to get any base runners. one to nothing. as we go to the bottom of the third. Here's Jorge Alfaro leading things off. Going to ground this one to second. Wonder Franco's had a busy day defensively, and he's done well so far. He hasn't made any errors, and he's done his job. That'll be the first down of the inning. Here's Jake Bowers now, 1-2 pitch, and he goes down on the outside curveball. A beautiful pitch by Santiago Osuna. Osuna is not known as a strikeout guy. I think that's a big weakness in his game, but, I mean, he is striking out batters in a nice clip today. Here's another one. Austin Riley goes down, and another 1-2-3 inning from Santiago Osuna. He has been excellent today. Top of the fourth, Pirates trying to start the base runner, and they will be successful. An infield single for Cabrian Hayes, who in limited at-bats has played well in the postseason. I mean, he's really been solid. Brian Reynolds now, weak grounder to Clevenger. He will get the out at first. Cabrian Hayes is safe at second. And the Pirates now with one out have a runner in scoring position. Wander Franco now up a 1-2 pitch. And he's going to hit this one into the gap out in the left center. It would be caught by Santana. The runner, Hayes, will retreat back to second, and now it looks like the Pirates are going to need a base hit to score him in. Here's Dylan Carlson, who's had a very rough postseason run, trying to get a base hit, but he is unsuccessful. Grounds this one out to second. Brandon Lau, who has been excellent in these past couple games, makes the play. That will end the inning. Pirates do get a base hit, leave a runner stranded, one to nothing through the top of the fourth. One of the bottom of the fourth, Bradley Zimmer going to lead things off. Top of the order up for the Indians as Zimmer will check swing on that pitch. That's a ball four, and he will retreat to first. Oscar Mercado now grounds this one to Cabrian Hayes. To Franco to Bell, not in time. 
The out at second is successful. However, Oscar Mercado is safe at first. And for the second time today, Mercado reaches base. Francisco Lindor now hits this one nicely into left. Cairo chasing after it. He makes the catch, running into the wall for the second out of the inning. So far, still no base hits for the Indians, and that won't change here. Grounded to O'Neill Cruz off of the bat of Brandon Lau. Quickly throws it to second. And the score will remain 1-0 through 4. The only run today was that solo shot in the first inning by O'Neill Cruz on the second at bat of the game. Top of the fifth now. Pirates going to start up a base runner as Pablo Cairo draws a walk. He's now reached base twice in this game. O'Neill Cruz now up. Obviously had the home run earlier and he's going to go down looking on the low fastball. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't take that one. That was a nice pitch for the first out of the inning. Josh Bell now up at the plate. 2-1 pitch, and he hits this one really nicely. Deep in the left center field, and this one is caught. Domingo Santana with a nice play. And once again, the Pirates, for the second time today, have a near home run, but it just does not quite have the distance. Another lucky one there for Clevenger. Mejia now 2-2 pitch. He will strike out once again. And that will end the inning, or end the top of the inning, sorry. One to nothing through five. We'll see if the no-hitter for Santiago Usuna can continue as Domingo Santana going to lead us off. And he hits this one high, fairly deep, into center field. It will be caught by Brian Reynolds for the first out of the inning. Good start here for the Pirates as Santiago Usuna continues to wheel and deal. Tyler Naquin now up at the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch here as he grounds this one. Actually, he's going to field it nicely in the left center, and it gets by Reynolds. A bad defensive play. That'll be a double for Naquin. It looked like Reynolds tried to go for the catch and risk a big play like a double rather than just let it drop for a single, and we'll see if that one comes back to bite the Pirates. Alfaro now hits this one into right, caught by Carlson. Naquin will tag up to third as Carlson will just throw it over to O'Neill Cruz. And now the Indians are a single away from tying this game up. And would they be successful? The answer is yes. Jake Bowers will keep it fair somehow. That'll be a double, actually, for Bowers. And the Indians, with one swing of the bat, will tie it up at one. A huge hit for Bowers, probably the biggest of his life. We'll see if Austin Riley can give the Indians the lead. The answer is no. He goes down looking, but still, the Indians have to be pretty happy. They tie it, and with five innings down, we are now deadlocked at one. Top of the six we go as Benny Lang jams on an inside fastball. A really nice pitch by Clevenger, and Domingo Santana will make the catch. Here's Cabrian Hayes now, one-two pitch, and he lost this one deep in the left, and it goes off the wall. Santana... Ran directly into the wall. That's got to hurt as Cabrian Hayes gets a huge one-out double. But I think the bigger story here is Domingo Santana clutching at his chest. And his day will be done. Adam Duvall will take his place into left field. If this game does go to a game seven. There is a solid shot that Domingo Santana might not be active. Brian Reynolds now 2-2 pitch. And he let that fastball sail right down the pike. Second out of the inning. Wonder Franco now, 1-2 pitch, and he's going to go down on the inside fastball. Excellent pitch by Clevenger. That'll probably end his day. And another runner is left in scoring position. Let's go to the bottom of the six now. A pitching change for the Pirates as Rysel Iglesias will enter. I know not a lot of Pirate fans aren't going to like this. Santiago Usuna has been great today, but he just pitched game three. He's on short rest, and if he stays in, who knows, things could get ugly. Speaking of ugly... Some miscommunication there between Cabrian Hayes and O'Neill Cruz. Neither of them thought they were getting the ball. Doesn't really matter here as Oscar Mercado will just ground into a double play. Quick two outs there for the Pirate defense. Good pitch by Iglesias. Francisco Lindor now up. I almost called him Mejia. I've called him Mejia at least like 10 times in this World Series as Lindor will fly out to center. Caught by Reynolds. A good inning of work. For Rysel Iglesias, who's been one of the best Pirate pitchers in this postseason. Let's go to the seventh. Clevenger's day is indeed done. Just like his first outing of a World Series. Six innings, one run. 
Cody Reed is in for the Indians. He has been phenomenal in the postseason. He's not allowed to run. Has done really well in the World Series. However, the Pirates are going to start with some extra bases. Dylan Carlson, who's been the worst bat on this team in the postseason, will open up with a double in the right. This is the Pirates' opportunity they need to strike. We'll see if they can do it. Runner in scoring position with no outs. Top of the order up. And, well, Pablo Cairo will open uh, things up with a strikeout on a high fastball. Not a great start right there. O'Neill Cruz is now up. A little lefty on lefty crime. The 2-2 pitch. And that one was nearly a strike. He's lucky. Full count now for Cruz. And he will go down on the inside slider. A phenomenal pitch by Reed. That was certainly a strike. But O'Neill Cruz couldn't do anything with it. Here's Josh Bell now. Full count. He hits this one fairly nicely into right. It is caught for the out. And again, the Pirates lead another runner in scoring position. I feel like that's just a broken record now. Bottom of the seventh. Here's Brandon Lau. This ball is crushed into right, and it is gone. Lau with his third straight game with a home run, and the Cleveland Indians will take the lead as it's now 2-1. to one. A huge hit for Lau, and all of a sudden, with one swing of the bat, Cleveland is now up. Brandon Lau has a storied history in the postseason. He won the World Series for the Rays in 2020. He won the postseason MVP in 2021 for the Indians before they lost him a World Series to the Nationals. Speaking of a player who was on that Nationals team, Wander Suero will enter the game for the Pirates. He has been phenomenal in the postseason, but his day will not start off too hot. As Adam Duvall gets that one over the head of Cairo for a double, and with nobody out, the Indians have a runner in scoring position. They are up 2-1, to one, but they're not satisfied. They are looking for more. Naquin now the 3-1. He will look at an outside and low cutter. That's ball four. And with nobody out, the Indians have two runners on. We'll see if they can capitalize, unlike the Pirates. And it looks like that'll be the case. Jorge Alfaro places this one perfectly into right center field. Both runners will score. And the Cleveland Indians, within the matter of minutes, will take a 4-1 lead. A disaster of a seventh inning so far for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and all of a sudden they are now down by three. Jake Bowers will ground this one out to second. Franco makes the play. However, Alfaro will get to third safely, and if he can score here, the Indians have a chance to make it 5-1. to one. Austin Riley grounds this one to Hayes. He's going to throw it home. The throw is in time, but he had never tagged the runner. Alfaro is safe as it's now 5-1. to one. The runner on first is safe, and only one out. Here is Bradley Zimmer. He will fly this one to left. Cairo with the play. And he decides to charge for the wall for some reason. Two away now for Cleveland. I think all the Pirates are hoping for is that this disaster of an inning does not get even worse. And it looks like that could be the case as Oscar Mercado will reach base again. He's been on base a lot today. Single into center for Mercado. That would bring up Francisco Lindor. The inning started with the cleanup hitter, Lau. Lindor obviously third in the lineup. This means the Indians have batted around. I don't know what the hell Wander Suero is doing there. Mejia will get a base hit. And now for the second time in the inning, Lau is up at the plate. He's going to ground this one to Bell, flips it to Suero. And the Indians leave them loaded, but they score four. A disaster of an inning for Rysel Iglesias and Wander Suero, who have both been outstanding in the postseason. And it is now 5-1, to one, and the Indians are two innings away from winning the World Series. Pirates are not going to go out without a fight as Ty Tommy Canely will enter here in the eighth. Francisco Mejia up at the plate, going to ground this one softly. Lindor makes the play, and the Indians are now five outs away from being crowned the champions. Benny Lane now up at the plate. 2-2 two -two pitch, and this one's going to be rocketing into center for a hit. The Pirates are not done yet. I know they're down by four and things are not looking good, but this is a talented lineup. They've not clicked so far in the World Series, but maybe they can get something to click. Cabrian Hayes now with a single into center, and the Pirates have two runners on with one out. They have a prime opportunity to score multiple runs here. Brian Reynolds now, 2-2 pitch. He's going to go down on the changeup. A huge out for Canely and Crew. And now a huge at-bat here for Wander Franco. 
as he hits this one nicely to third. An incredible defensive play by Austin Riley. It looked like that was going to drop for a base hit. However, Riley saves the hit and potentially saves a number of runs. Who knows? Let's go to the bottom of the eighth now. Pedro Baez will enter for the Pirates. Just his fourth postseason appearance of the season. I think his first of a World Series. Here is Adam Duvall with a single into center. Duvall with two base hits today, even though he only entered the game in like the sixth inning after Domingo Santana's injury. Cleveland already with a runner on. That'll bring up Tyler Naquin, who hits this one barely out of the infield. O'Neill Cruz under it for the first out of the inning. As long as the Pirates don't allow any runs here, go into the ninth inning down by four. I mean, things are not likely for them, but I guess it is possible. Jorge Alfaro now will go down looking on the slider. Baez needs one more, and this inning will be complete. Here's Jake Bowers, who got the who drove in the first run today, back in the fifth inning. He's gonna fly this one out to center, or to right, sorry. Dylan Carlson makes the play. That will end the inning. And the Indians are three outs away from winning the World Series. We'll see if they can do it. Dominic Leone will enter. He's not the closer. Since it's a four-run game, technically it is not a safe situation quite yet for the Indians. Dylan Carlson going to open things up, striking out at an ugly pitch. And all the Indians now need is two. Here is Pablo Kyra. Now he's gotten on base a couple times today as he hits a single into right. Kyra may only be 19 years old, but he's been clutch throughout this entire postseason. And the Pirates have a franchise-changing player in Cairo. O'Neill Cruz now a single in to left. And again, the Pirates have two runners on base. We'll see if they choke once more if runners on or if they can capitalize. Nick Whitgren is in for uh, Leon as the meat of the Pirates lineup is up. Bill, Mejia, and Lang. But unfortunately, we won't get to see Mejia or Lang. Bell grounds into a double play, and for the first time in 75 years, the Cleveland Indians have won the World Series. Not the way Pittsburgh wanted to go out, but it's been a long, hard-fought battle between both teams, and the Indians entered this World Series with the longest championship drought among all teams in the major four sports, the MLB, NFL, NBA, and NHL. Now that the Indians are champions, you know the new team with the longest drought? The Detroit Lions. Yeah, the Lions. I'm, I'm a sad Lions fan. But anyway, the Indians are the champions. They've finally done it. They've finally gotten over the hump. They've made the World Series a number of times in the past decade. And they finally get that elusive championship. For our Pirates, another heartbreaker in the postseason. Last year, the Pirates were a game away from making the World Series. This year, they were a couple games away from winning it. But, I mean, this Pittsburgh team was resilient from start to finish this entire season. 103-59. and I mean, there were a lot of points this season where it looked like Milwaukee was going to win the division. Pittsburgh kept fighting, and they won the division. They got past the Rockies in the NLDS. Then the NLCS comes around against Washington. And the Pirates started down 3-0. They came back from being down 3 0 in the NLCS, made it in the World Series, and things were looking good early, but unfortunately they lost some juice. The Indians won games 4, 5, and 6, including 4 and 5 being in Pittsburgh. And unfortunately, that's how season number 4 will come to a close without a World Series championship for our Pirates. Despite this heartbreaking loss, there's still a lot of optimism in Pittsburgh. This is a young, blossoming team who is a few pieces away from, in my opinion, being a legitimate World Series contender. And that brings us to the offseason, which will be the next episode. This series is not over. Uh, Francisco Lindor and Francisco Mejia, by the way, win their respective postseason MVPs. Mejia is certainly well-deserved. He has been outstanding. Lindor wins World Series MVP. I thought it should have gone to Brandon Lau, but Lindor was excellent as well, so I don't totally disagree. So next episode will be the offseason. This is a really talented team. However, it doesn't hurt to add a few more pieces. We got free agency coming up, a few guys specifically in the bullpen whose contracts are up. So we've got some big decisions to make. I hope you guys are excited. Hope you guys are ready. I'm out. Peace.